Well, I'll just show you a bit of these patterns. This this one's I've got a little mother of pearl star in the middle, and all this is natural wood. Africa Badork, Puramello, Rosewood Mahogany, and different woods that are all that colour anyway. There's no stain on any of these. And this one's says Peter Chittenden, September 212. The reason I've made so many of these is because I really got into the marquetry and messing around making the fingerboards and things. This just says PAC 2014. This is a late one. This one's a little banjo, which is tuned a bit like a tenor banjo. Um, I bought these fingerboards without fretting, quite reasonable, 15 quid each from America um, and that one's a banjo All, most of these others they're ukulele banjos yep this one's July 2013 this one's June 2013. This is a 10 inch saucepan. This is an 8 inch Swan Brand saucepan. I'll show you how to do that later. This one's solid maple. This is June 2012. And um, these are all natural woods, as I say. This is lace wood. Now, if you lay it that way, it looks like stones, but if you cut it the other way, it looks like stitches, although someone's sewn it. That's why they call it lacewood. They have all got names, these ukuleles. This one's called the Gothic. Um, and as I say, some of them are nine and a half inch saucepans that way. And if you can imagine a saucepan and you chop the bottom off of it, then put some wood inside it and drill the holes round it. This one's September 2012. None of these bits of wood are one piece. They've all been done in more than one piece, so they can't walk. This one took me about three days doing that pattern, which I really love that one. Beautiful. But this is not... This is the part of a pressure cooker and also because there's a seam there this is not a saucepan this is a pressure cooker and what I've done is I've cut a bit out of it and put two layers fixed together that's why there's a join this one's September 2012, 2012 as well this is one of the very first ones I made um, and but I do love the pattern on that one right This was the top off of one of those little boxes that you, you can get Moroccan type boxes that I got at a boot fair for 50p or a quid and I've cut the top of it out and started in the middle. All these patterns, they're all glued onto a piece of plywood. Um, they're not just veneer, that's why you couldn't damage them. They're about two mil thick um, and they're glued onto a piece of plywood, say about, must be about what? five five six mil something like that and also all these as i say all these necks they're not they're not one piece of wood because if you do it in one piece of wood then you're more chance of it splitting uh warping june 2013 this one peter chitten and june 2013 this one i called the flower and you can see you look carefully you can see where the wood that way and that way where I've seamed it and glued it in the middle 
you can just see it on this one. So it's a two piece. This one's June 2013. Now the idea, the idea of where you get a nine and a half inch or 10 inch saucepan on here, why, if you get a Swan brand, most of this stuff come from the boot fair, if you get a Swan brand saucepan, right, an old one, it's got a nice ring if you ding it, um, <clears throat> and also inside of these, I have laminated layers of wood so that it's thicker, not just the al aluminium, but I'll show you that, but I'll take one of them to pieces. This one's July 2013. The reason I made so many of these is because A, they sound different, and because I've never done any marquetry before, I really enjoyed and got a lot of pleasure out of putting all these natural woods together. Um, and they, as I say, they all sound different for what tuning up. That's not been tuned for about two years. This one's called the Diamond. And I must say, I do love these patterns. I've, I've done some of it a bit skew with, which has made it look good there. You can see this one really good with the grain that way, where I've sawn a piece of wood and they're opposite against each other. So, you know, if one wants to walk that way and the other that way, it will stay where it is. Yep, this looks a bit deeper here for some reason. And this one's... June 2013. This looks like a nine and a half inch saucepan. How um, narrow it is there. This one I've called the ugly because I don't know why I can't stand that pattern really. You know, it's, I ought to have took it off and do it again. Look, see this, um, see where I've laminated the two different bits of wood together to make the next work so it won't warp. Um, and on this one, I've put a thin bit of rosewood instead of ebony, like on some of the other ones. This one's July 2013. I don't know if I've done this one or not. That's um, June 2013. Yeah, I think I've done that one. Right. This is the other one that's a banjo. Um, this is... Um, a banjo rather than um, a ukulele. I've got it kind of tuned like a tenor banjo or mandolin um, to play things on. Like the other one, I bought two finger boards, about 15 quid each with no frets in. Um, and as I got fed up with putting all them dates, I've just put my initials on this one. There's no even, oh, it says November 17. Well, something like that. Um, also, if you notice, they've all got a zero fret. Because on these instruments, with all, if, if you just use the nut, I've found it's always a pain. It's much better to have a zero fret than you've got a slightly bigger fret than the rest. And then you haven't got all that messing around setting up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it's tuned to without going get the tune up. This is the one I'm... I've been using um, gigging lately. This is Purple Heart, which is a very interesting wood because if you saw it, it goes brown and you sand it, then it oxidizes and goes back purple again, which is very interesting. Um, and as you can see, this one is not a saucepan. This is a part of a pressure cooker that I've fixed around there. By the way, these rims are stainless steel and what I've done is I've bent them round. I've got a sheet of two mil, I think it's two mil, sheet of stainless, put a straight edge on it, and I've cut these strips. Then I've bent them round something, and then they've been welded underneath there so you can't see. So these, the more or less, cost nothing. Um, but we can talk about all this later on when I take one of them to pieces. And you'll be able to have a uh, good look. This is an eight string. 
January 214. This is a kind of George Formby type ukulele that's got eight strings on it instead of um, instead of four. Because I've got onto the market and I loved it, just doing some of these patterns. Uh, that's what made me make another instrument so I could get on to making another back. Um, I'm not over the moon with the varnish I've used because some of them I've used floor varnish, painted loads of coats, then rubbed it all down, but it's, a, it's discoloured the wood. Um, but if I'd have had a better compressor, I should have gone on to two-part varnish like guitar luthiers use, which is really, really hard. This one... As you can see, it's not aluminium. This is a stainless steel saucepan that's really thin, which I've used on this one. Right. I love these patterns. Took ages sitting watching the telly. You start from the middle and then getting it all to fit, glue a bit and a bit more, you know, the one, and then go where you go. But it is beautiful. You can see there the different pieces of wood where I've joined it, where they won't, so they can't move really. This one's 2014. This one I've already done, that's it. Right. That's just showed you roughly about them, what's going on, and obviously the, the later ones I made. Um, I got into a few more dots on the fingerboards and things like on there I got into putting a star on the end and thin layers of thin layer of ebony and used ebony fingerboards um, I'll show you how to do the um, to do the fingerboards and things so I'll take one of the pieces right that's about it for that I think at the moment Right, I'm going to start off. The reason we're looking for an 8 inch um, saucepan um, is because you can get a Remo head, Remo banjo head, that will, that is an 8 inch. Right, and that will go over there so that you can make a body. Right, if you try and do it with pressure cookers, Prestige and all of those cookers. Pressure cookers I've found they're all eight and three eight and three eighths round instead of eight inches. The only one that I found that is an eight inch across there is a tower. Yeah? So you could use this tower. Now because <coughs> of that curve, and you don't want that whacking great curve right in the corner, you'd have to cut that down off so somewhere around there you'd have to go off there and cut the bottom off and then I think it was about two and a quarter then you're going to go round here and cut that off now after I've sawn these kind of things to get them flat I bought a 12 inch disc sander which you can get different grades so you can hold that on there and get it perfectly round flat rather and then you can, once you've cut that off with a saw or whatever you're going to do, you can mark this with a carpenter's marking gauge. Then once you've cut that off there, you can do the same on the other side, on the sander. So then you've got yourself your rim, right? Which is this bit. You've got your bottom and your rim. Right, because of the size of this and it's quite thick, you could get two out of this. Right, that's that thing. Now, once you've done that, the other parts you need to do, what I've done is I've got some very thin pieces of wood, about two foot long, 
thin kind of an ear type wood from the local rowing club because they use fiberglass now. They've not got much use for this wood, so they, I bought a load of that off of them. Cut it into two inch or just up over strips. Okay, what's this? Yeah, they're two inch. Cut it into two inch strips. Put some hot water in the bottom of your bath. Lay, lay it in there for a few minutes in the hot water. Then get it, pick, get it out and then just bend it round and leave it in a saucepan like that. And then you can warm it up with a hairdryer or a hot paint stripper inside. And then you'll find it will dry, curved, enough for you to be able to clamp one layer in here and then glue it up and glue it up and you can see the joins if you look carefully on this you can see where I've joined it then it takes away the metallic sound takes away the metallic sound so you've got a kind of wood and a metallic sound right these things I were paying £2.50 each for which is a lot of money and then I discovered free postage from e off of eBay, free postage from China, they were 42p each, so I bought a load of them. Okay, now, <clears throat> I made this up because if you count round here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I've put 10 on there, which is good enough. You can go more, whatever, but anyway, that's what I've used, and the good thing about making that pattern is... When you put one of, this is a bottom of another saucepan. Imagine the saucepan's up there. Okay, as I say, these are sometimes different curves, but it don't matter. There's lots of dents and scratches on these saucepans, but you've just got to um, get them smoothed down using this, um, this Rhino Grip Valco back stuff's good. Right. Okay, so then what you're doing there, you get a marking gauge on the bottom of the saucepan, go off whatever you need. This one happens to be, this one happens to be inch and three eight, right? Um, and this is a ten and an eighth saucepan. All these saucepans are different. The one on this one's nine and five eighths. Okay, you just got to look around. These have all come from the boot fair for a pound, three quid each or whatever. That one's a bigger one, that's ten and five sixteenths. But if you do one of them as a resonator and you cut your tank holes round, you'll find you won't get it in one of these hard banjo, you play your banjo cases you buy. This is what I'm cutting the holes out with, something like that. And what you've got to do then, obviously, is work it out because if you've got 10 of them, I've gone in between. So there must be 20 there. And if you don't do it that way, then you're not going to get this to fit in there in between when you've cut that you're not going to get them evenly in between like that okay now where that fits on there when I connect this up so that the sound of that's got somewhere to escape there you've got to have little blocks to bring that away there so the sound's coming out of there right all this natural wood, this is purple art, even though I sand it and it goes brown, it goes back to purple when it oxidises and the air gets at it. This is what I'm using for the backs of them. And this, um, this is 5mm ply. Bit of 5mm ply. And what I'm doing, I've fitted that good in there. Then I'm sticking this down. I'm doing all the different patterns on here, sticking them all, smoothing them up, and I'm putting them inside of that, obviously. And then I've got, then I've got the uh, the back of it sorted. You haven't got to do all that flashy marketry or anything. You haven't got to do that. You can stain that with a bit of mahogany, kind of um, stain and varnish it, and just have a plain back. It's uh, there's no restricted things. These pieces of wood, as I say. These are the different colours. This is rosewood, African padauk, puramello, lacewood. And if you want to do 
some patterns. I've bought all, all these pieces of wood. If you go online and look at Styles and Bates um, Sutton near Dover, because I'm in Deal, Deal, Kent, England, you can buy these pieces of this African badork and these different, all these different woods. And what you do is get a bandsaw, run them all through at about two mil. I think it's two mil, or you can end up with two mil. What are we? No, my mistake. What? Four mil. Run them all about just over four mil, say. Then you can sand them on a belt sander. Right. And then you've got your pieces to play around with your patterns. These things usually come in a square. Because people turn these ball pen type things up with them. They make these ink pens and everything. So that's what they're using all these different ones for. Right. If you, once you run all them through like that, different flavours, if you want to make a pattern like this, then obviously all you've got to do, this is lace wood, get this, get this, get a few of them, yep, whatever you want, glue them all up together, glue them up, make sure they're flat, and then run them through that way, and then you've got pieces like this to play with. Okay, this is Zebrano, yep. Different woods, brilliant stuff. No need to stain anything. All the colours, like on that ukulele, they're, they're all natural. All you do is you make your pattern, then after that, all you've got to do is to varnish it. This one's called the diamond. Brilliant sound. Right. Now, we're, we're only working on the back at the moment. Right. So, <clears throat> back to the resonators, finding yourself these. This sauce this, this is a poached egg container from the boot fair, probably picked it up for a quid. If you've got a dent in it, you can use the dent where the, um, where the neck's going to go in, so you get rid of the dent, yeah? And the other bits are cover on the back. Let's have a look at these, what are these? Yeah, now these are dead on 10 in these are just dead on 10 inches. They're nice ones then. And what you do, if you're tank cutting them out, as I say, you work out where your holes are going. By the way, to make this, to make this and get all your patterns, right? If you get a calculator, the Pythagoras theory, and if you, if you wanted to know roughly where you're gonna um, put these, if you measure that, that's eight inches. Right, so if we go eight, times 3.14 oh, done it wrong um, 8 multiplied by 3.142 okay we've got 25.136 inches so you can work out roughly and also by using that it's just over 25 inches that tells you how long you need to cut a piece of stainless off of a sheet to make the rim okay I think that's three mil I've used there or oh, some of these rulers have seen better days that's either two or three mil there might only be two and as I say that's been bent round something like a gas bottle or whatever to get it nearly right then I've made um, some blocks on a bit of plywood and I've got my mate to just TIG weld it at the back because I've not got a TIG welder. Right, that's basically that. Right. Yeah, sometimes if you carry these to the boot fair, it's great. You, um, not that there's any on with this COVID luck, but if you take one of these with you, and then when you get to the pick up a saucer and say measuring, you can just see like that if it's going to be a good job, you know. Well, that's that. Where are we? This is standard ukulele tuning. G, C, E, A.
they all sound good. This one's a diamond. Okay, they all got a different sight, different sound. I don't know. It's probably the saucepans, the sound of them. That's just a bit of an Irish tune. 